So I'm going to just give a very quick overview uh, of the, the general principles, and then the awesome panelists are going to dive into the nursing applications. So what is artificial intelligence? Computer systems designed to augment human intelligence. AI has been around a very long time. Think Siri when you ask Apple something or Alexa or autonomous drive driving cars or hearing about Watson beating the, wor the world's best chess player. AI systems have been around a long time. But generative AI, which we're abbreviating here, Gen AI, is really uh, quite new in terms of its mass uh, um, use. It generates novel content, text, images, audio, by studying and recognizing patterns in large data sets of human created examples. So it's basically learning from the body of knowledge that's is there, um, finding patterns and then being able to create for you novel content. So what's a couple examples of this um, out there in the world? Just, just words, we're not gonna go into in depth, but words that you're hearing. So when you hear them, you'll know where they're coming from. ChatGPT, you've probably heard about. That's from a company called OpenAI, and it's now embedded in Bing, the search engine from Microsoft. BARD is the version that Google is using, and you will start seeing it in Google searches if you haven't already. It'll just be as a part of your Google searching. And Claude is kind of an upcomer, it was spun out of OpenAI, and has a particularly good uh, start on it, and you may hear more about them. Then there's a whole area of image. We talked about images, audio, video, et cetera. There are image, one's called DALI. It's also from OpenAI. And the best way to, um, to show this is to give you an example. Now, this is not nursing, but just in case you haven't gotten a flavor for it, I wanted to give you that uh, just sense of how it is used. So first of all, everybody can get a ChatGPT account. You can download it to your iPhone. You don't have to pay for it. And uh, on the web or on your iPhone or, or your Android device, I would encourage you to do it because this is a, a great way to get started. You just ask any question you want. So here, um, I, I did this as a video. Um, so I say, good morning. And this is real time. Good morning, how can I assist you today? Uh, so I went a little bit fast there. What I asked it was, I have a friend coming over for dinner and he is gluten sensitive and trying to lose weight. What can I make with these ingredients I have on hand? Spinach, I misspelled, chicken breast, various pastas and canned tomatoes. And then off it went. It sounds like you have some great ingredients <laughs> trying to be uh, friendly. Then it gives a list of ingredients, the ones I put in and some other pretty basic ones that, you know, in many people's kitchens, and then gives step-by-step -step instructions. I'm stopping this. It would all happen within seconds or so. And it says, you know, this dish is gluten-free and incorporates the ingredients you have had on, tries to summarize and, and give you uh, kind of a summarization. Then I asked, and this is where it becomes endless. What are gluten-free substitutes for pasta? And there are several gluten-free alternatives. Brown rice pasta, quinoa, chicken, chickpeas, zucchini noodles, et cetera. So those of you that know the kitchen know all this already. But those of you that may not, like me, <laughs> zucchini noodles, ooh, that's kind of interesting. So this is a very basic example and you can use it in your personal life. And I would encourage that first, uh, just to get familiar with it. So what about the image uh, side of this? So Dolly is you just type in a prompt, produce an image evoking generative AI in healthcare. I did this this morning, that's what it gave. You can see all the you know, medical images around, you know, whatever, you can get the impression of it. We'll talk later, Kim will talk later about how doing this specifically in nursing, but you get the sense of, of just how powerful it is. You made that image just by giving it that prompt. So how does generate Gen AI work? Well, we're not gonna go into too much depth here. It's pretty interesting if you're interested in it and a little complicated, but here's the basics. It mimics human creativity by analyzing and then applying 
learn patterns to create original realistic output. So it does a vast amount of data analysis of incredible data sets that basically the internet that it has access to. That brings up lots of questions of whose data and whether there's copyright. And we're not gonna go into that today, but it's a very big issue that you'll, you'll read about. Then it tries to find patterns in, in this content, structures, styles, correlations, all sorts of things that the human mind is doing all the time. And then using algorithms, neural nets and other uh, approaches to try to associate those things with each other to be able to generate things that make sense. And the output generation employs a lot of things to synthesize information from vast things down to a few words, then to validate it. This is before you see it against other uh, sets of, of training trained material and then refining it maybe even before you see it. And then of course, the, what it thrives on is iterative feedback. You're actually interacting with Gen AI, AI systems and that creates an opportunity for, for the system to learn when you ask a question twice, or you say that's not right, or whatever, to, to try to refine itself um, through these algorithms being processed over and over again. So I'm going to just flip to very, you know, thousand, <laughs> 10,000 feet flyover of, of uses in nursing education and let our panelists really tell you about them. But I wanted to just set the context so that you see it within that. What's really great potentially about Gen AI for nursing education? The ability to customize and personalize uh, learning materials. We know students are, have different learning styles, have different levels and different language skills. What if we could customize them uh, or more to my, the class that I teach or the time of day I teach or the language uh, barriers of the students in my class, whatever. That's the opportunity. And simulating and virtual patients are one example of that, creating simulations very effortlessly. Also enhanced scenario-based learning, something that Unbound Medicine is very involved in old school way by having nursing educators create them. But there are really great opportunities to enhance that uh, or to give students even more access to uh, scenario-based uh, learning opportunities. Adaptive assessment, so it's not just drill and kill, but it's trying to help you figure out, uh, help the student figure out where their weakness is, um, you know, plug gaps, et cetera, and to, um, and to really mimic what it is you're doing in your curriculum. We talked about language. This is going to be huge because if you could help people who have language challenges, you know, overcome that while they're learning the rest, you're going to, they're going to do so much better. Uh, and keep up in ways that will allow them to be equals where they really are intellectual, but their language gets in the way. And then research and analytics is a huge opportunity, you know, globally and within nursing. And Justin's going to help you understand that a little better. So what are these real world examples? You're going to hear from them. I'm just going to paint and brush, uh, brush a, out a, a, a view of that. Interactive case studies, slam dunk, customized lessons plans. A little more interesting, a little more challenging. Adaptive quizzing and remediation. You know, some of this is just creating quizzes or, or tests or um, uh, questions, but then putting string in them together gets more complicated. But still, being able to create custom uh, questions, multi education, educational guidance, and AI powered research tools. And then the challenges, which we hope to to hit on, and, and many of you have brought that up in the survey, and hopefully you'll put in your chat some of the other things that aren't covered here that you wanna make sure that we address, maybe if it isn't today, other in other ways, cheating. How are students not going to stop learning and just using AI to do everything um, is the worry. Quality and accuracy, how do we know it's quality stuff? How do we know how accurate it is? How do we do that? What about data bias? Where does all this information come from when it's doing all of that analysis and extraction? Well, it's coming from the body of world knowledge. Is that world knowledge, uh, you know, equitable, uh, diverse? No, it isn't. So the data from which it comes is biased and that uh, these uh, systems are trying to deal with that systematically, but it's, it's very important to see it as an issue. 
data privacy and security. If you're giving knowledge to it, what does that mean about that, uh, the the students, the the learners' um, uh, privacy and security? What about equity and access? We just talked about equity and access. Who gets access? It costs money for these things. So, or you know, all products cost money. What about people who don't have um, the resources? Will people become technology dependent? Uh, well, how do we try to prevent that? Um, and that really gets to the last skills gaps. You know, the students are probably going to be ahead <laughs> of us educators if it's like every other wave of technology. How do we deal with that? 